Hey guys! Felix is our six-year-old Samoyed and when we got him we knew that this breed is quite difficult to train but we didn't knew how difficult it would be and we made many mistakes along the way. So in today's video we will share the top 10 mistakes we made so you can avoid them. To give you a little bit more background information, we are Julia, Sven and Felix and we pretty much started immediately traveling with Felix when we got him as a puppy. That's why he's already been to over 30 countries. And right now we are traveling with our vintage van Daisy all across Italy. Okay, let's jump right into the video and start with the first mistake that we made, which is about Felix barking. Would you speak? Speak. Now he's only barking very quietly, but he can do it much louder. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay that's enough. <laughs> As you can hear, it's pretty loud. And when he was a puppy, he barked all the time. And unfortunately, also everywhere. In the train, in the restaurant, in the shopping center, everywhere. And it was just so annoying. One day we even ended up getting thrown out of the train because the passengers were so annoyed by him. And then my sister came up with the idea that every time he barks at public spaces where he's not supposed to, we just use a little water pistol and make him wet. And Splish. this immediately worked. <laughs> it was so crazy. We only had to do it a single time and from then on we just showed him the water pistol and he was quiet. Super easy, but it worked. And nowadays he doesn't bark at all anymore when we are at public places. Um, he usually just barks when we play or when he's excited that someone's coming home or when he's playing. The second mistake we made is that we started exercising with Felix a little bit too early. So we went with him on runs when he was only four months old. And this is just too early because when he's still a puppy and not fully grown out, his bones and his joints can get injured by all the pressure while exercising. So, of course, you can go on walks and do simple trainings with him, but if you do anything that is a little bit too heavy or too stressful for his joints and muscles, you should start doing that only when he's fully grown up. The next mistake we made is a bit obvious, but we will also mention it here because we made it. <laughs> of course, all these commands like Pötchen, Pötchen like these, give paw or play dead or whatever, are super cute, but they don't really help you. So if you start training, start from day one and start to train the important trick tricks first or comments, like sit, come back, lay down, stay at one place, um, etc. Because you really need them and the sooner your dog gets used to them, the better. Another mistake we made is that we didn't train him consequently enough on a leash. So we pretty often just unleashed him and let him run freely. I mean, that's amazing for him and it's very cute seeing him run around, but he, this guy is very stubborn, so he needs very consequent trainers. We better should have just kept him on a leash and trained him how to walk on a leash properly. In case you don't know, Samoids are sled dogs, so they love to pull, that is why a consequent and successful leash training is just so important for them. Even nowadays, when Felix is a little bit too excited, he still pulls on the leash, so it's a consequent process. It will probably never stop, but yeah, that's how it is. Also, maybe we should add, whenever we put him off the leash, he will just not come back to us because he has such a stubborn mind whenever he sees something and we call him back he will not return because he has this thing in mind and he wants to chase it or he wants to go there or anything yeah, and he just doesn't hunter. hear us yeah he's a hunter and he kind of like turns off his ears <laughs> his hearing ability whenever he wants to and that's sadly pretty often so even nowadays with his six years we can't really unleash him only at places where we can see everything but never in the forest where wild animals are around because this way he will definitely be gone. The next mistake we made is that we went to a normal dog school when Felix was a puppy instead of getting a private trainer from the beginning because in that dog school there were all these good boys and girls like golden retrievers and labradors and 
they are just dream dogs or most of them are and all these dogs are so addicted to treats they're super easy to train and Felix was never interested in treats at all so it was very difficult for him and when we started to get our private trainer we could really work on the issues we had with him because they were so different compared to all the other issues from the dogs at the dog school and this way our training was much more successful we had faster results and it was so much more fun and we also started to understand that dog training is not really about the dog but mostly about yourself. So you will learn so many things about yourself, your behavior, etc. that you have to work on to make this possible. The next mistake we have to mention is that we kind of fell for his tricks because he sometimes just felt a little playful, a little <laughs> foolish. He fooled us by running around and whenever we wanted to get him back into the house, for example, from, from the garden, he just said, no, no, I don't want to. I will just run around the garden and I will play catch me if you can, something like that. And we kind of fell for that sometimes, well, not sometimes, but pretty much every time. So we always chased him. We wanted to get to him, but he was like smart and uh, out thinking us like running around some fences and bushes and stuff like that. So we couldn't get him at any point. And the thing we should have done is just ignore him, go back into the house. And then at some point he will come to us or another thing that we now sometimes do whenever he does that is that we just get our leash and we pretend to walk because that's just the favorite thing he loves it so we always get him with the leash and then we fool him so we're a little smarter at that point right now all these games that he was playing or that he's still playing are about getting attention and another thing that he did for getting attention was just sitting or laying somewhere and barking at us like for minutes and minutes and our dog trainer then said to us that we should just turn around, ignore him and look into the sky so that we pretend to see something that is just more interesting than him. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point he just stopped barking. Another mistake we made or we didn't really make it but uh, we have big issues until now with Felix that he doesn't like other males. He loves every female dog he is the cutest dog ever when he meets doggo ladies, but when he meets a not sterilized male, he will start a fight. And the other dog usually does as well because he also isn't sterilized. This can get very annoying when we are in a restaurant or walking on a street and the dogs are starting to bark at each other or want to attack each other. And we don't really know how it started. I think there was this one moment when he was a puppy, we were walking in the street and a dog came out of a building and just attacked him. He almost bit off his ear. We had to go to the vet afterwards and um, Felix got a big shock. But I'm not sure if this was the trigger or um, if it was just because he got older and more mature and his hormones played crazy. I don't know, but we still have this problem until now and we don't really know what to do about it. Maybe you have suggestions, then drop them in the comments. We would be very thankful for that. Of course, we always went to dog parks. We always had lots of interactions, especially when he was very, very young with other dogs and he met so many different people, dogs, kids, etc. But uh, yeah at some point suddenly he started to hate all males. The next mistake we made was that we didn't use the correct brushes to take care of his fur. So his fur is kind of like complicated and it needs a lot of maintenance and we needed some time to figure out which brushes are the best to take care of his fur and in case you wonder which brushes they are we link them in the description below so you can check them out if you like. Another big mistake we made was about his feeding routine because I usually took or still take care of this and I always gave him food and he is very picky so often he just looked at it and didn't eat it straight away so um, he then left and I thought maybe he will eat it later and he can come back to it at any time when he's hungry and eat it then but this is not good so if your dog doesn't want to eat straight away take the bowl away and give it to him at another point of time so he knows when he gets his food he has to eat it or he won't get anything at all. 
The last mistake we want to talk about is about his puppy time. I think this counts for basically every dog breed there is. So we didn't really read the signs correctly. Um, after some time we figured out that whenever a puppy eats something, he plays or he sleeps, right after these things, they pee. So <laughs> if he ate something or he just woke up from a nap, you basically have to rush with him outside. So he knows that he can only pee outside and everything will be fine. Occasionally, of course, sometimes during the night time he will wake up and he will pee. <laughs> that happens, but that's just part of the game. But by looking after these things and those steps, you can avoid little accidents inside the household. It will make everything so much easier. These were already the 10 mistakes that we made with him, but we also did a few things correctly, so we will share them with you as well. The first thing is biting. Puppies like to bite. I don't know why, it's, um, it's kind of... Uh, Exploring the world, trying things out. They, they test how far they can go and they explore everything with their, with their mouth. So um, he often bit our hands. Uh, it wasn't very painful, but it was just annoying and we wanted him to stop. So our dog trainer gave us the tip that might sound a bit cruel, but you don't have to do it aggressively at all. Uh, whenever he bit us, we just bit him back. Not very strong, just to show him that this is not so nice. <laughs> and we just had to do it like two times and he stopped. Another thing that really helps us nowadays that we did earlier was that we... Hey, we're not done yet. <laughs> oh, he needs his shade. <laughs> okay. So what is helping us a lot nowadays is that we took him with us whenever we traveled somewhere, like from the very beginning. A week after we got him, we straight away traveled to the Netherlands and we didn't stop traveling until now. And from that point on, he started to get in touch with other locations, with other people, with other dogs and uh, with other smells and everything. And that is why he's uh, kind of like a social dog, I would say. Yeah, and he's very used to going to different hotels. I mean, we've met dogs that can only sleep in their own bed, that freak out when they visit other houses, etc. And Felix is just so chill because he started to get used to this super early in his life. So we can basically leave him alone at any hotel. He never freaks out when we visit public places and it's just super relaxing for us nowadays. So you don't have to start traveling super early, but make sure to visit lots of um, public places and take him as much as possible wherever you go so he will just get used to all the all these interactions and uh, in the future when he's older he will be much more relaxed about it so that's it for this week's video we hope it was helpful for you in case you liked it give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss our future uploads see you then bye bye, ciao, bye, ciao. bye.